Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of RPT, Red Pill Tamales Podcast. This is the Normie episode. We got the Dr. Juan, I almost call you DJ Juan, <laughs> Dr. Juan What's in the up, building. What's up, y'all? Uh, comedian Juan Perez, but this boy has been on a health kick and he's been breaking down a lot of stuff. So uh, we definitely going to talk about that, man. What's up, Juan? Nothing much, man. Just, uh, just getting adapted right now. <laughs> been right. catching up on some work and stuff and then... Uh, 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 well, I guess we'll start with this. Uh, no, our friend, my friend, our, our friend Israel Garcia had recently passed away, um, and so you know I, I'm still adapting to that because yeah. uh, I have a lot of things I had to do as far as like you know I have his phone, so I'm having to like go lives and stuff with yeah, him and his fan and yeah. let them know what's going on with him and <clears throat> and all that stuff. So that's been crazy. <laughs> yeah, um, my wife and I we we brought him up today. And we're like, man, it just doesn't. We both agree. We're like, I had already thought it on my own, but it came up between her and I. It's like, man, it's it's like the reality of like, wait, so we just not gonna see him again? Like, so you just can't call him? You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. when do we go see him? And it's like, nah, man, like that's it. And it's like, ah, uh. yeah, that's crazy to me. Yeah, and, and for those that you don't know, uh, our friend Israel Garcia, he's a stand-up comedian. He's been doing it for a long time he's been on tour with chingo with uh raymond Ota, with a lot of who's who's uh texas comedians and stuff so like he's just been everywhere and he's been all over the country um and so he passed away with pancreatic cancer in aggressive form and he like pushed it back as much he fought so hard like uh he did several different rounds of chemo and uh you know even pushed it back when they told him he had a few days, he pushed it back a few, you know, a few more weeks. <laughs> like the boy just, it, that dude was hard to kill <laughs> for real. Like he's a, he's a tough little kid. He's a tough little guy, especially looking at him and knowing how small he was. Like you always wouldn't see that like, dude. He's a, he's a fighter. Yeah. Um, I heard from a nurse that, that with, uh, what she was trained in is basically like, I guess when she went to nursing school is like, they said pancreatic cancer is the most like painful one, and that they tell them like, don't ask. Like they want pain meds, just give it to them. They're mm -hmm. like, don't ask. Like if they, you know. Yeah, he was he was handling it so well that like they just didn't know when because like he was just like, can I have some more pain? And and some of them were like, oh okay, yeah, yeah. But like he would literally have to. He would literally tell them like on a scale of one to ten, it's like a six. So I was like, "Bro, are you sure?" <laughs> like, yeah. like, and, and then sometimes they would go to eight, but like for the most part, like he was just muscling a lot of a lot of it out. So yeah, so. and and uh, an amazing thing, bro. Not only um, you know, did he get baptized and and you know, choose Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, um, but also, also he left the fans like his legacy. Like he left a monster special, bro. That like. I know it's going to do numbers because once, you know, it really, it, I mean, it already has a lot of views, but once it really catches on to where people are like, yo, the message and how he, like the material, how he put it together, how he delivered it. I mean, it's a, it's masterful. It went up another 3000 views just the other day. So yeah, no, it's, still it's, going. it's masterful, bro. And, uh, and it's really good. I was quoting one of the jokes. Uh, I don't want to ruin it, but, uh, I, I told Marisol, I was like, man, one of the, one of my favorite jokes that he says is uh, how they grew up next to uh, like the the poor cotton pickers, and that his mom would be like, I I feel so bad, and I, you know, I I want to go out there and make them some burrito, and he's like, mom, we ain't got no, we ain't got nothing to eat, you know, and then he does the whole thing about the vata. He's like, I don't know if y'all know about the vatas, but after a couple thousand washes, they start getting a little see through, and she's out there. He's like, and then my mother's this age. So they looking down here. <laughs> yeah. And we know his mom too, man. But definitely keep keep them in your prayers, man. Um uh support support the special. Go watch it. Um, you know, hit up his GoFundMe. Oh, the GoFundMe has already been reached. The GoFundMe has already been reached. I already did. Y'all did more than enough for the ones that donated that. That was great, man. Thank I, God, I, thank I, God. Yeah, all that that worked out. I, I I didn't have any doubt either because like just everybody was willing to help. Support. Yeah, a lot of support. So yeah, and, and the other thing is I still haven't even announced this, but I'll have to announce it today later when we're done with this. Is uh, <laughs> I got to tell everybody that like because of the way Israel was, uh, this is breaking news here. But because of the way Israel was, Israel didn't want to. Uh, he's the type of guy that he just wanted to be cremated. 
and he didn't want any services. So, I mean, his mom's just going to go through with his request and not do any, like, formal services, but, like, she's going to go and pray with people at church and stuff about it, but just to honor what he wanted. Just cause, and her, and her, her whole resolve for it was basically, like, he lived out his whole life doing whatever he wanted on his own terms, and who am I to take away his final request on, you know, no services? So she's, yeah, you know, she's honoring that last wish. I just haven't told everybody yet. I still got to go live on his stuff. Well, I had to hear from another comedian before <laughs> Juan. Uh, I had to hear from a whole other comedian today that was like, he was like, man, in, 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 in typical Israel fashion, he said he don't want no services. I was like, I know he wanted to be cremated, but but what, what you talking about? What you mean? You know, oh, yeah. but here now, now I get it. Yeah. So yeah, unfortunately, man. Um, you know, a rare gem of a person, man, and and we we couldn't have him forever. Yeah. So anybody who was blessed to know him, work with him, see him perform, you know, we we definitely uh we definitely lost somebody special. And um, uh, I spoke to his buddy Raf, uh, or our Rafa. buddy yeah, Rafa Molina out there in in Cali. I'm hitting a lot of West Coast dates this year. A lot more dates coming together. So uh, my boy, uh, Raf Molina, El Rafa, he's going to be hitting a lot of these with me. Um, for example, uh, Brea, California, man, hitting up the improv. We starting off the tour uh, February 8th in Brea. Uh, Burbank, California, two days later, February 10th. So on the 9th, I'm going to probably be in L.A. doing some podcasts and stuff. You know what I mean? Pulling up. Uh, H-Town, H-Town, my home club, Houston Improv, February 23rd and 24th, only four shows, get your tickets, don't get sold out, but check out the website, because uh, we're hitting, like, Lubbock, Canyon Lake, I mean, Austin, San Antonio, we're a lot Paso, of Texas cities, a lot El Paso, of Texas cities, Paso, San Jose, San Diego, Ontario, Oxnard, Bakersfield, all my people, man, uh, say Del Rio, Del Rio, Texas, Del Rio, Texas, that, that link will be up soon, in a few days, but uh, no, nah, just thank you guys so much. I hope everybody in the Texas, wh where is this freeze affecting everybody, bro? Like, I mean, I know this Arctic blast, it's making its way. So uh, as we film this, uh, mm -hmm. all my TikTok people watching right now live, TikTok live, subscribe to TikTok live. Going to be doing a lot more lives. Um, this weather, man, is supposed to be coming in. It's supposed to be dropping. And I, I'm trying to get better at my like survival skills. Bro. <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I went over my little cheat sheet for like, okay, how I'm going to plug this thing here. Now the generator goes here and then you cut the breaker off here and then you plug that in. And you, first you got to, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to get familiar with the breaker box. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How's jujitsu? You've been doing jujitsu because you've uh, been getting better at survival. <laughs> nah. Well, you know what? Last time I went to class, it, I don't know, it might have been like a week ago. And I realized this. I was telling Juan off air. I realized that. Sure, technique and all that plays a big role in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. However, size and strength plays a real big role as well. Um, so, obviously, I'm a beginner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't be trying to run up on me. I'm a white belt, a couple stripes. But, but I realized when, we, um, when coach put us in a gauntlet. So, check this out, right? So, uh, coach had put like, I don't know, like eight... Eight upper belt dudes, uh, y'all. They all sit on the ground. Then all, all us got to line up, and then we got to like take turns trying to do this thing. And my buddy was next to me. He's like, "Hey, man." He's like, "Man, you see homeboy right there?" He's like, "Man, he rolls extra hard." He's like, "Last time I rolled with him, he said I got a busted lip." I was like, "Damn, word!" And then they're like, Brr, "Next, oh shit, Pete, your turn." So I got to go get with homeboy, and we I'm trying to do some stuff. And next thing you know, somehow, some way, I got a bloody nose. In jiu-jitsu. So I don't know if a knee, graze, a, a left forearm. I don't know what it was. But it was one of those like, ah, okay, is that mucus? <laughs> I think he's like, ah, I think it's mucus. Okay. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. They see, you know, I'm in the restroom, like, like sticking toilet paper up my nose. Like, bro, is this? Oh, yep. It really is. It's got some blood right there. How old, how was the guy? <laughs> how was the kid? No. How was the kid? <laughs> no, this, no, this is a grown ass man, bro. Uh, you know, I, he trying to make it sound like man. So this chick is she always this rough? <laughs> um, no, he's a grown ass man. He's probably like thirty four or uh, something. Okay, so you know? young and under you a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, because I mean, I'm I'm old, bro. I'm <laughs> old, and I forget sometimes because you know I got you know I've been putting cayenne pepper. <laughs> 
in my, in my water. <laughs> Dr. Juan got me on his cayenne pepper. And I ain't going to lie, bro. Like, it makes me, it makes me drink more water. Uh, a- adding, like, salt and sodium. Adding, um, what's that stuff I put, man? Liquid Himalayan. IV. Oh. They had, like, potassium, electrolytes, magnesium. All those minerals. Are you talking about the salt or are you talking about something else? Both. Oh, so, okay. You're so, talking about liquid IV. So what I'm saying is, yeah. So like in my water, I need to get that good salt, like some other kind of salt. Because I just got like sea salt. The Celtic salt. So what's the second best under Celtic? Celtic's just, the best one. Himalayan's the second one. The other ones are kind of shitty. Even even if it just says sea salt. Yeah, there's like right. less. There's less than. I, I don't know how many, how many minerals are in each of the sea salts, but they're not as much as like. Like Himalayan has about like seventy something, and you could cook and with all those, right? Yeah, Celtic, and, and then Celtic has like 80, 82 or eighty three <coughs> uh, minerals. So that's you get why, a lot more. That's from why it. it's pricey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you get three different types of magnesium from the Celtic salt, mm-hmm. which, so. which is a calming gives you a calming effect, and most people are deficient. But like so far, bro, it helps me because I used to be very bad about my water. I was always like coffee. Coffee. Wonder why I'm tired. Coffee. You know, not a lot of water. Yeah, that's the, that's the other thing is that uh, most of it, we we were mostly dehydrated just based on all the uh, on all the caffeines that we take, all the other stuff. It, it, we're like always behind. Like we think, like let's say let's say the regular body is supposed to have five glasses of water a day at minimum, and that's you not being active or nothing. So five five glasses of water, or no eight glasses. I'm sorry, eight glasses of water. And that's not being active or anything like that. Then you add caffeine on top of that. Exercise. That's sweat. extra. Yeah, that's extra. Add more of that. I mean, we're so dehydrated throughout the days. People don't even realize. Like, you, you don't even realize how dehydrated you are until you actually start hydrating properly. And then you're like, oh, damn. You know what? I'm not even thirsty or anything. <clears throat> so Dr. Juan, he done went down a rabbit hole and is revamping, <laughs> revamping his entire life. Uh, the reason he's not on camera right now is because uh, a lot of my young kings out there got girls on these apps on TikTok, yeah, and uh, we we can't have we can't have Doctor <laughs> Juan right here, and then they're gonna be like, chill, chill, King, my, my wife on here, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And we got the we got the red pill blend, you which know, is <laughs> that's not little bad. caffeine, <laughs> little caffeine. Make sure when you drink some of this red pill blend, you're gonna need about five cups of water, five extra to water, <laughs> yeah, so just one, to offset, yeah, the red one, pill blend. One cup of water, one cup. Of, I mean, one cup of coffee, coffee is like equal to like five cups of water in a day. That's how dehydrated. Like Meaning you offsetting the, the yeah, five so cups. Yeah, so it's like eight, nine. Yeah. It's like 13 cups of water. That's a lot. Yeah, that's day. a lot. But that's, that's not even, lot. I mean, that's not even that much. So I can see right here, I got this, I got some uh, cayenne in here, a little bit of liquid IV. Ooh, you know, you ever put um, uh, apple cider vinegar in, in a little splash in your water? No. Come on, man. Let I, don't me know deal, you I, don't, I don't deal with, with Bill Gates' uh, no, apple cider. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> no, it's not the Bill Gates brand. It's the uh, H-E-B brand. Oh, uh, okay. Which That's probably like, made by no, the No, it's the same people. thing. Yeah, I think he bought it. He bought the H-E-B? That, oh, I, I don't know. He bought that Bill other Bill Gates one. bought H-E-B. Breaking no, news. What's that, what's that other one? Yeah, yeah that that's main the other one. one. Uh, that's the other one, right? Yeah, no. I'm talking about the... I got the H-E-B I mean, he one. Didn't he buy apples or some shit? Don't, don't he own apples? Don't he own apples? Didn't he patent apples? Um, man, this little freeze. I- I'm gonna say something positive though about this little weather. I know I'm shifting gears. Um, because certain things, yes, it throws off everything, like all this weather stuff we've been having. But we've been needing to catch up. Like my wife was boy, she boy, she was cleaning the house. Like, I mean, nonstop. Like you know, it, it, the girls accumulate so much stuff because her aunt. Oh, it's just, oh, I went to TJ Maxx. I saw these little matching sweater, you know. And it's like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. Thank you. And it's like, oh, look, I brought them each uh, a Barbie from the this, and it goes with the that. And, oh, this one got 25 little pieces. And we're like, so then my wife is just like constantly like, okay, they have too many of these costume dresses, these puffy, you know what I mean? And um, so anyway, got caught up on cleaning and um, like having a meeting about this tour. Uh, are we still friends tour uh, making sure like uh, we got to hit because I, I want to hit Milwaukee I want to hit Michigan I want to hit Ohio Kansas I want to hit a lot of these places I uh, knocked out a feature bro it's fire so I got in the studio yesterday okay so I haven't been able to do that number one because my studio room was messy and there's 
colchas, blanket. It's like storage. <laughs> so you don't, you're not creative. So my wife went in there and got rid of stuff, rearranged stuff. There was some art laying on the thing. She's like, you got to put it up, and yada, yada. And um, so I knocked out the feature, uh, MC Thewak featuring me, Chingo Bling. Yo, bro, it's bumping, bro. You know my features, bro. You know my features. Come on, bro. This little, and I did one with, I did a song with, uh, this is, I did this one like a couple weeks ago with Racheton. That one's so bumping, bro. So yeah, y'all be on the lookout for that MC That Walk featuring me, Chingo Bling. Any dates on any of those kind of releases, like more or less? Uh, there, dude, I literally sent him the wave files to my vocals like today. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's super excited. Um, Next step is he wants to shoot a music video. So we got to talk to Compound Films what day we're going to do it. But MC Thelwak, he spells it a T W O C K. He's originally from Monterrey. This beat alone, the beat alone is crazy. Uh, of, of course, my verse, I put extra crema. Um, so another good thing about getting that feature out the way is I can move on to like Theo Juve's single. Okay. You know what I mean? He's got some beats he's got to get on. So I, I'm, I'm encouraging him. Um, my five-year-old, she saw a YouTuber, this little girl named A for Adley. She saw a vlog where she did a, um, she was, had to get in a studio for something. Like she's making a song or something. So I told my daughter, I was like, Hey, she's like, I want to do that, dad. I said, okay, well, we, we definitely got to monetize. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, you know, the studio's clean now we can get you in there. Um, so yeah. And besides that, man, just, you know. Like we were talking about earlier, just trying to uh, start the year off right and optimize, you know, get our, get your mind right. Um, I mean, I'm speaking for myself, but not, and I'll let you chime in, Juan, because you're Juan's definitely on a mission. Juan is like super Navy SEAL cutthroat, like like when he decides something, when it's like, yo, I'm not if, if Juan says I ain't eating no carb, you know what I'm saying? If Juan says I'm eat one time a day now, he does it. Well, it's just I, been, be it's, it, you know, it's been interesting though because like when I when I so when I tell you I eat once a day, it's because the way I'm hydrating now, I just yeah, didn't realize yeah. before like you I was eating chugging shit. I was chugging too much. Like when I would chug waters, it's not good for you. It's like literally you're supposed to just drink it like a normal regular human being. Juan did a one eighty. <laughs> Juan did a one eighty. All the uh, 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 sports, what do you call them? Uh, energy drink community. He has turned his back on y'all to the caffeine community. <laughs> He forgot where he came from. Yeah. Uh, uh, you're not allowed anybody that's a C4 fan. Yeah. They're just going to be like, you sold out. That's it. I don't even mess with C4. Uh, but, but but tell them how many you used to drink a day, though. Uh, it was like uh, two to four a day. To function, two to four. Just so, to get by. Just to, just to get the work done and stuff like that. But now I don't even I don't even need it. I don't even think about it. Like, and, and I don't have any headaches or any drawbacks, dude. But I will tell you, by the time it took the time it took me to get off of fucking C fours and caffeine and all that stuff, it took me like five full days to get over just the headaches. And after that, it was groggy for like a couple of days, and then I was good. Dang. It took me like almost seven days. You probably had to reset your adrenal glands, bro. That, everything. I was. Yeah, I was <clears throat> your body was done. having to like make adrenaline. Yeah, well, you were like an adrenaline junkie. Yeah, and then I came off of everything else. So it was like literally just a pure like week of just like, oh, this sucks. Like it's it uh, really sucked. Meanwhile, me uh, on the other hand, I feel way better. Even though I'm pushing coffee, I feel way better, bro, by skipping my second cup. Like I just do the one in the morning, and I just tell myself like, nah, dog, that's it. Like you had your coffee already. That's your morning. That's your morning routine. You got your dosage. Uh, and leave it alone. None of this, like, eh, café, Ay, hace, hace frío. That's how it is in my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And my, me and my wife, we're a great combination, but at the same time, it's almost like, bro, we can't both, we can't both have these type of habits. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like when two shopaholics get together, and it's like, yeah, that's going to be trouble. Yeah. Man, yeah, so just... Changing up the way I'm drinking the water and then actually when I eat, I just, the reason I eat once a day is because by the time I eat, it's like two o'clock or four o'clock, somewhere around there. And then uh, technically you're not supposed to drink when you have, when you eat. Is I didn't know that. Like, I think I've been drinking ever since I was like, like drinking water or anything. You're not supposed to drink anything with your food. You're just literally supposed to eat. The reason why we drink with the food is because like we're dehydrated. 
And so when we're doing that, it's literally watering down your stomach acid. Your stomach acid. Which I didn't even know that was a thing. And so your food doesn't always get break down broke down correctly. So then the nutrients doesn't really go where it needs to go because your stomach acid is not breaking it up the and, way it's supposed to. And there's all these myths about sodium and salt being bad for you. Therefore, People are um, table salt is dog shit. It is bad for you, but bad. like, but like, like the regular the one, real the salt, the yeah, yeah, it's dog shit. All Man, of it, the shit that like ninety nine percent of yeah, people. even sea salt is not the greatest. So the best sea salt, it's sea salt, but it's the there's two different kinds, which is again like we said earlier was the Himalayan and the Celtic. Celtic's the best one because of the minerals that are in it. The minerals that are in it soften all the other stuff in the salt. So all those minerals actually contribute to like really helping you. So like you have to like when you're taking it, the, you got to take everything strategically, really. And literally, we should be taking a lot of that salt. And people will say, "Well, it's gonna get your blood pressure up, and it's gonna get." It, like it, it really doesn't. Yeah, like my it really depends does. on. And again, it also depends on what else you're eating, because you could be doing all that stuff, but then you're eating a bunch of chemicals and a bunch of other crappy food. Like you know that nor like bouillon. <laughs> food. You know the nor yeah the chicken pot. They got MSG in it and stuff. How bad is that, bro? Yeah. How bad you think? Cause boy, we eat that. You got to you put that on everything. Like when you cooking meat, you got to put that on there, bro. Oh yeah. Uh, which one? So uh, okay. Have you ever seen? It's a nor K N O R R. It's got like a chicken. So there's like these big. Con well, they come in different forms, but like the container usually is like yellow. So they have like a tomato flavor one, a beef flavor. It's like the shit that comes in the ramen noodle packet. Yeah. That stuff. Oh. No, that's terrible. <laughs> that's a different kind of sodium. Yeah, that's terrible. Well, damn. Because that's, that's all we eat. Bro. Well, it has a bunch of other stuff in that, too. You got to read it. Yeah, you got to read it. And, and some of it says uh, uh, natural flavor. Any any of the natural flavor has, like, hundreds of extra oh, stuff. I got to read it. I got to read it. <laughs> so let me ask you this, then. So basically, how do you make your food? You could probably break this down. How are you supposed to make your food have taste without putting that? What are you eating? Because, like, for me, so I'm literally nice. eating, like, chicken and, chicken and bison and venison. venison And and then sometimes I just eat eggs. And, and I'm just mixing that with vegetables. That's it. And then when I just put, how like, sea salt. Your, how you season your uh, Sea salt beef? and pepper. That's it. Black pepper and sea salt. That's it. Okay. That's it. Okay. See, because you live by yourself, bro. Uh, the, I, got, I got my try with the, No, but try with the Celtic salt or with the Himalayan salt. It mm -hmm. gives it a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. Not just sea salt. Sea salt's. Not that great either. But the other ones are way better. It just tastes different. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to read them packages. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, look, next time you record <coughs> with my wife, like a Her Lounge podcast or something, tell her about that Nor Bouillon. And I'm sure people in the comments on, on the TikTok are like, oh, we put that. You got to cook with it. Like, soups. I mean, bro, you know my babysitter be whooping up. Yeah, you know we got we got to get on that 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 documentary thing. Remember that we were gonna do the documentary. We yeah. still haven't even yeah we haven't even broken that down to do it. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot. So we could try to schedule it. Um, I you know what I was oh I was let me let me mention this, bro. Speaking of that documentaries, so I went down this rabbit hole about this uh, jujitsu instructor who owns a gym. His name is Javier Vasquez. Uh, I believe he's based out of California. Uh, like Orange County, I think. So he has like an MMA background, all this stuff. <clears throat> so he did a documentary where he was explaining how in his life he uh, got diagnosed with uh, colon cancer, had a divorce. I don't know if the divorce was right before, during, or after. But he still had to get back to teach, and it was like stage three or something crazy. He still had to get back to teach. He still had to make money, run a gym, and all this stuff. And... So first, they put they gave him a surgery, right? They did yeah. the surgery. And then the doctors were like, hey, man, we got to hit it with this now, this cocktail, yeah. to, to make sure we really got it. And he was like, no, thank you. I'm going to do this other method, all these juices and all this, like, very regimented thing. And uh, so he did a whole documentary about it, which was super interesting. It's on YouTube. Uh, but the way it was put together, I was like, man, it's, it's effective – but they didn't, like, I feel like I'm overthinking mine. So, in other words, they just kind of put him in his gym and just lit him properly and, you know, Mike. And he just kind of told, 
you know, I was having to do this and it, it take this much time and on an hour and I still had to teach, you know, and then it cuts to his sister on the couch like, man, it was a family effort, like, da, 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 and it'll cut to something else. But, um, yeah, that's how I envision ours, like, very simple. But, like, ours has a little twist, which is being interviewed by Theo mm -hmm. yeah, So yeah. it's a little different because it's not just a regular documentary. It's actually <laughs> comical, but at the same time, we're still getting all the points. And so it's really, I think, the way I, I kind of envision it, it doesn't have to be, like, crazy. Like, we, we can get some, certain shots and stuff like that, but for the most part, it's really getting the, the bulk of it in the story. And the story form is what we have. And then we just add the twist of comedy and then get some other sh extra shots that we can get with Joseph. Boom. Okay. So, yeah, we'll discuss later, like, who's going to film it, who's going to edit it, how you want to do it. Right. But, yeah, I'm down, bro. Just tell me where to go. Ask me the questions. Yeah, yeah, And how's, how's the comedy going? How's the set? How's your set going <clears throat> for the, the new set you've been working on? Yeah, so um, I, I will say that uh, Theo Juve's set is pieced together uh, because, because uh, you know, I don't know how, how much time he's gonna do, right? Yeah. But <clears throat> Jingle Bling writes uh, Theo Hoover's jokes. <laughs> <coughs> you good? I looked at Hoover's notes how about that. <laughs> so yeah, his is definitely coming together because when Hoover is on stage this year uh, for this year's tour, it's like anything goes. You know what I mean? It's like you don't want don't go to the restroom, bro. Like. You don't know who he's going to pull up on stage. You don't know what he's about to do. And um, because Juve is going to take up a piece of the show, I believe now my set <clears throat> may not have to be as long. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I have less work. But but when it comes to my set, um, a lot of ideas, uh, a lot of jokes that, that uh, I had considered doing in the past that I just kind of abandoned, didn't really polish them. Or I'll think of something where I was like, oh, that, that, that's part of that one joke. I was like, man, I need to bring it back this year. So there's definitely like certain characters and like uh, stories and, and things for sure. Yeah. So looking forward to it. Uh, first stop, Brea Improv, California, February 8th. After that, Burbank, February 10th. So, so by the time... I hope some other little things pop up in between there so that by the time I do Houston, February 23rd, 24th, I want to have like a bunch of reps. You know what I mean? All, all these dates are around the corner, but, you know, I really want to hit them with something fresh. Uh, however, how many people do you think that went to the House of Blues show in Houston are going to be at this improv? Maybe some of the people from the jujitsu gym. I'll tell them like, man, come to one of the later, like towards the end of the weekend. Yeah. So uh, guys on TikTok, uh, just... If you guys, you guys can go to his uh, ticket link and then just see what, what days we're going to your town and stuff like that. We already have a lot of those dates up, um, even some all the way to Octo what, October. I mean, we got like Corpus, Corpus <laughs> Christi is in November. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix. I yeah. forget when Phoenix we is. got all the way down to like the end of the year already. So <laughs> if you guys want to go check it out, there's some dates over there. But uh, And more to be announced. More yeah. to be announced. But if you're on TikTok, we're going to be going live a lot more with... Chingo, we're going to try to do a lot of the podcasts live and stuff like that. And then also, uh, Theo Juve is going to jump on and do some lives as well. And then uh, we also have some some extra little things. So if you guys want to subscribe to Chingo's Live, we're going to be doing a lot more of those. Have more Theo Juve advice and Ch Sancho stuff on the, the live. So uh, we might even do some of those just for the subscribers. So, yeah, be mindful of that as well. Um, yeah. But, yeah, we're going to get ready to wrap up in a few minutes. You yeah. Got anything else? You yeah, want? yeah. This this the normie episode, man. So you know, the, I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world, and uh, we'll talk about it more on the uh, Patreon. Yeah. So also, guys, if you want to see like actually what the RPT is really about, like we really do a lot of our talking, well, talking shit or whatever we do more over there because we can get away with a lot more. But like live streaming it and then also putting it out for the public, you know, we can't say certain things, and yeah. so you know, people get triggered. You know <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. But thank you guys. We're telling TikTok bye. Yeah, we'll talk TikTok bye. Uh, thank you, TikTok, so much, man. Can't wait to meet you guys. Uh, I'm bringing Juve with me this year. Are we still friends? Tour. Uh, can't wait to go to your city. We just want to make people laugh, man. That's all we're trying to do. Thank you. Peace. All right, TikTok's gone, man. Now we can really go in. <laughs> You're like, so, uh, Iowa caucus. <laughs>
Yeah, there were some people asking about Trump and stuff on there. I was like, damn. <laughs> like good or bad? Uh, more mixture. More like, oh, you're throwing Trump on his nuts or what? Yeah, all that stuff. So I, I don't know what, nuts or what. I don't know what they've been seeing on. I don't know what they've been seeing on uh, TV or anything like. Yeah, they're still, they're still or, like, or, hey, bro, like, man, that Biden memes. though. Biden's been doing good, huh? Like, they're tripping. There's no telling, but 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 check this out, bro. Um, there's some rappers that uh, are in that like political space and um we start having talks about collaborating a little bit like doing a song but i'm gonna have to probably like lead the way in terms of like the concept like what type of vibe only because even though i've already kind of been through the fire a little bit and i've already gone through a lot of this stuff like you don't want you don't want to get on a song with some people and not really have a lot of say creatively to where it's like, oh, I didn't know the video was going to be like this. You know what I'm saying? Or like, yo, why are y'all saying that in the hook? Yeah. And it, because re- your haters are constantly looking for ammunition. Like, for example, for example, they might say uh, the other artists might say something that's like super pro Trump. You can take Oh, that. I don't need this one. Yeah, no. Thank you. Like super. They might just say something, right? Um and and basically like they're just waiting to be able to be like oh yeah why aren't you the same guy that was featured on the song that says this and it's like that wasn't my part you know what i mean yeah or or like do you still feel like this or yeah that's why you did a whole video about donald trump because you're on his nuts and it's like i don't want the whole song to be about him i want to like unify and wake people up yeah i i think people don't realize that we we were just we're we're like we're just common sense right now like and right now with everything going up like it's like dude we Expense. can't yeah it's like dude we can't like you can't yeah. say that what we're doing is working that's that's the thing it's like common sense would say if we keep going in the direction that we've been going in the past four years a lot of a lot of people especially in the middle class aren't going to be around anymore <laughs> like a lot of those people are going to be dirt poor losing their house on the streets if they don't have families families gonna have the family structure is going to be look look different. Like more more families are probably going to pack in together because it's like, you know, one family lost their house or something, and it's going to be a lot more, it's going to be a lot more hard. I mean, right now it's it's getting even more crowded than it was before. Like, I mean, you you look at the way things are right now. You got all refugees. Oh yeah, all, not even neighbors anymore. It's like dude, they're like they're like replacing Dang. a lot of people. Like you know what I mean? Like they're giving most of the, they're giving a lot of aid and stuff to them rather than. The people that were already here even the vas bro so so how how is another country getting more money how is another country getting uh, like more money than they're giving back to the american people multiple how, wars how, all how, these haters and enemies how are how are how are all these privileges being given to a lot of these people you know what i mean it, it's, it's insane and, and now they're talking about like when they're going to start sending people back over and stuff like that taking them to trials and stuff and then i think somebody had suggested something like um that that the that we should that that uh any any refugee that's coming they should be they should be appointed uh like an attorney or something and then so i remember somebody, who's gonna pay for that yeah Volunteers? i gotta look at it the, there was like a video about it and, there, and some guy was like well who's gonna pay for that taxes so you're telling that's us cool. that the taxpayers taxes have to go up even more so that the we can start giving public more. defenders like dude they're just trying to crush the american people because think about it with everybody already coming in they're already starting to take up different spots. They're gonna let them vote. They're gonna let them vote. They're gonna. They're gonna. They're trying to get them weapons now. They're trying to get them into the military now. They're trying to blend them in all kinds of places. And a lot of these people <clears throat> without any backgrounds or anything like that. How do you know we're not? We're not. We're not giving it to terrorists. How do you know we're not giving it to people that are from other prisons in other countries? You don't know. Like there's, it's too much going on right now. I mean, Eagle Pass is like overtaken right now, and it's just. It's like it's getting too crazy. It's too much for anybody to, especially working a nine to five and already being crushed by 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 taxes and by by just inflation and everything, binomics and just really looking at the the rate everything is the the trillions of debt, the spending. Yeah, the so you don't they don't have time to look this stuff up. They don't have time to read all this stuff. So they're just and and then they're all distracted by social media, like. Oh look! I'm gonna see who's doing this on Facebook. Yeah. And, oh, oh we gotta man, buy one of these. My man like, left me, and let me let yeah. me just message that. And oh my God, feel sorry for me. Like there's all these stupid things where it's like you guys aren't even looking at what's happening right now. Like you don't even know why you're stressed. You don't even know why 
you're just always you're confused and you don't you don't understand that all this is just crushing us and so like that's where we're at right now and we sound like crazies because they're like you know we sound like our hair's on fire like they're poisoning us like yeah. th- th- these elections you know what i'm saying can't say too much because this is going to be on a lot of platforms yeah but, uh, but yeah dude uh people definitely get demoralized the media hasn't been the most accurate all the time uh they're coming after um you know like twitter x you know they're they're saying like oh this is a problem you know there's a lot of hate speech on there there's this one kid i follow his name's shaney rich he does these like political like man on the street interview type of things well they kicked him off of uh, one of these video platforms (laughs) and uh you know i mean everybody that that's been a loyal listener rpt and especially you know the patrons I mean, they're the ones that's like you, like you just said, actually paying attention and concerned about our communities, our families, our livelihoods, our bottom line. And you, you want to speak out more, but there's this stigma of like, no, 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 you want to be on the right side of history. Like you, you don't want to be uh, labeled a bigot. Like, no, 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 don't say anything because they're going to call you a right, whatever this extreme, whatever. Well, if you keep going down this route, we're not going to have history. That's the thing. It, like, if we keep going down this route, like, most of y'all that you're concerned about, like, are we going to be on the right side? We're not going to have a history. Like, if we keep going down this route, like, like just looking at everything and, and seeing the way everything's going, like, we're not going to be around much longer if we let this keep going. Like, we're not. We're just not. And if we are... Meaning you go, we're going to be in the gulags or what you mean? No, like, I'm just saying, like... Amer- like america like america yeah like america won't be here much longer the, the way we're doing i mean right now we're having millions of people crossing the border who are you talking about like they're gonna like overthrow us like and, it's ridiculous well it'll probably turn into some other thing like the, you it know, could. the soviet states of whatever 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 right and like you said they're gonna take down the statues remove symbols rewrite history and put that in the in a textbook like no 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 no. that was not a peaceful gathering history is already being rewritten i mean look at look at look at what fauci was doing with some of the definitions on google like you know what i mean we don't even know and the text the textbooks that are starting to come out they're they're talking about some of these big events some of these big protests and they're like no 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 this is the narrative this is what happened this was encouraged and this person led the way yeah. and these and because they lied and these people followed yeah it's and they're too all much criminals. yeah there's too much information and not enough to keep up with that they can change literally little things here and there and you wouldn't even know and you'd be like wait a minute is that what happened wait and I it's like yeah and you got <laughs> that's and, not the way i remember it is, is something change yeah yeah like that yeah I'm literally that parent now that's like, let me see in the book, history. No, that's, yeah, let me tell you what they left. They simplified <laughs> that. Yeah, because I think back, bro, like, I think back of, like, when I was indoctrinated, I'll just, as we wrap up, as we done overwhelmed y'all, would demoralize y'all. But I remember specifically, bro, in college, uh, university, it was a sociology class. I don't even know why I took it. It must have been for some requirement, for some minor or whatever. And, um, the teacher i realize now was like a hardcore um i don't want to call her communist but like a um communist yeah pretty much (laughs) but like 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 woke before woke like like one of those critical theory type of like you know we're looking at it this way yeah extrapolating the stuff that like what the concepts of like oh it it's kind of good if you look at it like this but then they don't realize like yeah but if you get the wrong person in power then other shit starts happening and then they start stripping away too much or they start taking more things away from you and then the ones that are hard working this is where the this is where the whole communism you you can there's always a ceiling like you're always set to be at a certain place and they tell you what you can and can't do yeah so look let me tell you how i know now i was like they were trying to indoctrinate me more. So so the reason I'm telling this story is because public school gets a bad rap, right? But I really can't recall anybody in public school overtly trying to push a certain agenda. You know what I mean? They might have been to something small like, like, oh, who are you voting for with the, the, the exercise? Like, well, the, the you know, this party is the one that cares about the poor. So do what you will with that information. It's like, okay, well, I'm voting for this guy. <laughs> and I'll turn in my paper. <laughs> Besides that, uh, I don't, but like this sociology teacher, right? She's probably a Marxist. 
And some of the stuff she'd say was like kind of cool. It was kind of like fight the power. So it'd be like, um, she'd be like, cocaine and crack are pharmaceutically the same chemically. You know, it's kind of like saying is one's a shot of liquor, one's a cocktail. You know, it's, it contains the same stuff in different form, right? It's going to hit you different. And we're like, okay. And then she's like, why is it then that if you get caught with one little little piece of crack they give you this much time but if you get caught with this much cocaine you only get this much time oh like earthquake oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah yeah and it was one of those little fun factoids of like oh racism because they know who sells and who deals what yeah. and who does what type of thing and that was like her big point and then she gave us the definition of a gang and then she said now mind you let me rewind a little bit so she gave us an anonymous questionnaire like a list of drugs put a number next to have you tried it, willing to try it, or on the other side of the scale, you would never try it. And, of course, like, it was mostly, a, you know, Caucasian type of uh, affluent people at that school. So a lot of them were, like, either did coke or were curious to snort, <laughs> you know, and, like, oh, no way to the crack type of thing, right? And I think that's what she said. Pharmaceutically, it's the same. Like, y'all treating these drugs different just because of cultural reasons. So when she gave us the definition of a gang, and then she was like, all right, based on this definition, who's the biggest gang in America? And I'm like, I already knew what she wanted. <laughs> so I was like, the police. <laughs> it was like a scene out of Stand and Deliver. Yeah. I was like, the popo. <laughs> and dude, all those white kids in that class, they're just like, what? what? <laughs> all of them are like, did he just say the police? <laughs> they're here to protect and serve. And uh, she was like, Pedro, correct. And that and that's why she was like, you need to come to my office. Are you sure you don't want to join our department? And I was like, mm, what kind of job y'all get? She was like, I oh, don't worry about that part. I was like, no, nah, I need to know what kind of jobs are going to be ready when I do this, if I do this. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, there was this other kid, right? Speaking of like privilege. What was, and, it? What was it? What was it? What was the job? Like case work, social worker. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Something that I didn't really want to do. Like sociology. I don't know. Maybe somebody in the comments could tell us what sociology major can get you. But uh, I'll end it with this story, right? <clears throat> For this weather gets bad. Um, in college at Trinity University, one of the homies, he was from uh, like Scottsdale. I think his dad was a lawyer. It was like Phoenix area. And uh, he was he was like the next door neighbor's roommate. So we would all kick it. It was like a section of the dorm and we'd all like hang out. And uh, we went to go get these little cigarette things called BD sticks. It was like a fragrant, I don't know, Indian people. But it was, have you ever heard of those? Hmm. It was like some type of tobacco leaf. It was just like a little thing. And what was it called? B, uh, they called them BD sticks. But no. they had like, it was almost like you smoking incense damn near. Yeah. But it wasn't weed. It was almost like a mix between a black and mild and, a, and a incense. Oh, okay. <laughs> And it was just very like, you know, yeah, it's just cool, man, because you're breathing, man, you know. <laughs> you're exhaling, my brother. Yeah. So we went to the Planet K, the little smoke shot head yeah, shop, yeah. and uh, it was like in a, my boy, a buck, he was from Huntsville. He had this red Pontiac some, something or other. So it was like like buck from Huntsville, me, uh, that other fool from, from Phoenix, this other cat who's, whose dad, uh, rest in peace, was like this Tommy Hilfiger designer, like logo photographer, like all these kids, different type of backgrounds. So we get pulled over after leaving the Planet K and uh, over there by uh, by Trinity. And um, so the cops thinking, where's the weed? Y'all just left the little smoke shot. I know y'all got something. That's what y'all here for getting paraphernalia. And they just held us and waited and went back to the car and this and that and asking us questions. And the dude from Phoenix, whose dad was a lawyer, he was one of them like, no, they're here to protect and serve. Like, what? He was like, this is a nuisance and a <laughs> disregard for total injustice. Like, he was just ready to sick his daddy on somebody. And uh, the rest of us were cool. We were just chilling like, I don't know, bro. I mean, he's just, he probably thinks we have weed on us. And he's going to, once he figure out we ain't got none. He's going to let us go type of thing. He's like, yeah, but this is, there's no probable cause. Absolutely. Nah. And we're just like, welcome to the real world, Craig. You know what <laughs> I mean? We're like, this is how it is, bro. Sometimes they, they profile, you know what I mean? We're just little college kids. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's crazy. But we got a kick out of Craig being like, 
absolutely not like how is this starting even? to malfunction <laughs> i mean he he literally thought that like police only it's very efficient like they know who the criminals are and that's the only people that are getting detained and questioned and inconvenienced yeah i used to i used to think that too like i think my first encounter with a cop because i was kind of the same way like craig whereas like cops would do that and then i remember the first time i ever got pulled over the cop i didn't know it was a cop it was like late at night i was going home and the this car was right behind me it was like right on my bumper like on me and i couldn't see because it's like they're close on me dude and it's riding me like it's like Blinding, right behind me like yeah. for the longest time and i'm getting nervous now i'm like i'm like close to my house what the yeah and so i'm like do i okay there's two different ways i can go if i go here i could just cut real quick and then try to get away and so I put my blinker on, and they put their blinker on. Oh, shit. I turn my blinker off, they turn their blinker off. So now like, I'm like, what? You're like, I grab my gat, they grab their gat. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, oh, dude, what the fuck? Like, I didn't know what to do. And I was like, all right. He didn't put on a siren? No, he's just riding my ass. And then I, and so I put my blinker on again, they put it on again. And then so I just was like, okay, at the light, at the stop sign, because it was a stop sign, and now it's a light. At the stop sign, I was like, I'm just going to fucking just try to take off. Like, I'm going to get the stop sign for, like, a quick second and go. I did kind of, like, slow, st slowly stop, and then I that. go. And he got me for a rolling So He turned ah. the lights on. Dude, I'm, like, literally a block away, and I was like. Did you tell him, hey, bro, yeah. I, I thought, I didn't know who yeah, you were, Yeah, I didn't bro. know who you were. You were right behind He's like. No, nah, like, dude, like you should have. That's a rolling stop. You should have stopped, probably. Even if you're trying to kill and me, I was like, bro, I had no idea who you were. Like, he's just like, where, where do you live? I was like, I'm literally right around the block. I was literally trying so to get he home. He was on your ass for no reason. Yeah, for the was, longest. That's why that, and then so I was like super confused, and I was, I was literally complying. I was just he like, did some jujitsu shit on you. He's like, I'm apply pressure till you make a mistake. Well, that's what I'm saying. Ha! That's what that's what I'm saying. That's that's when I kind of started to get like, what? Wait a minute, wait. This Entrapment. This don't make any sense. Like, why would he do that? And then later, that's whenever I started learning. Well, that some of quotas them have quotas and, and stuff. And then you know, other times I've been pulled over. This sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're like weird. Like some of them. Like, there was this one time I got a new car and I. <laughs> I didn't know like the old like license plate was registered, I guess, to like some dealer or something. And so like they came at me aggressive, dude. Like two oh. guys on each car car, one guy with this on his like they both had hands on their guns. I'm like, who the fuck owned this car before? Wow. And I was like and they're like, get out of the car and I was like, Okay and they're like, You got anything in the car? I was like, No. Are you sure? And I was like, No. And where are you going? And I was like, I'm, like I was gonna go visit my mom. Like, where's the bridge? Like where are you going? And like they would ask me stuff, and then they would try to ask me the same question. So where are you going again? I was like, to my mom's. By the fourth time they asked me my mom's, I was like, look, man, look, man, I'm a mama's boy. I got bro. no, I got mad. I was like, uh, like I started losing my shit a little bit because I was like, bro, you've asked me the same question. It's not going to change. I'm going to my mom's house. I don't know what else to tell you right now. I don't know why you pulled me over. I don't know what's going on. So whatever, dude. I'm here. Whatever you're gonna do, this is my this is my life. I have nothing. There's nothing in my car. I don't care. Like, what What do you want to do? Like, I'm literally in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And they go back in the car, and they're just like, wait right here. And you I'm believe just like, it? dude, no. Nah. Yeah, they went back to the car. There's nothing. It's like, oh, no. So, um, no, there was a report about a car that looked like yours or something. So, you know, we pulled you over. And that's what they said. And then they're just like, okay. And then I was like, all right. And then I, there's, right. just, there's just like weird encounters. There's like, I've had about three of them. There's another one in Phoenix. Same shit, dude. Uh, you swerved. I was like, I didn't swerve. I, the, what yeah, are you talking yeah. about? I was going straight. It's like, no, you swerved. And then I, the, the whole time, this guy's just trying to egg me on. Like, I'm literally, like, nervous. What did they tell you, the like, sir, you look illegal, bro? No, dude. <laughs> How like, did they tell you that? It, they should have said that. That would have made me more comfortable. Dude, right. I was really uncomfortable because the one in Phoenix made me get out of the car. Made me stand there. And I was just like, okay, I'm getting fucking nervous. Like, why would you ask me to get out of the car? And I'm just, like, looking away from there. It's like... Why are you looking away? Where were you coming from? I was like, going from California and going to Texas. Like, what did you have? I was like, I'm a comedian. I had shows. He's like, you don't seem very funny. Like, ah! Yeah, he's trying to. Ah, but he's, he's talking. Very, like, he's no, heckling you. He's oh, literally. Bro. No, but he's literally trying to get me for any. Like, he's trying to get me to react. Because, again, I'm not I'll even. You, bro. Look, I'm not even looking at them. Like, I'm like really nervous. And I'm like, literally like, why is he having me on my car? What the fuck's going on? And. And he's like, why are you like, why are you facing over there? You can come over here. I was like, I'm fine right here, man. And it's like, and then he's like, 
What's with the attitude? I was like, there's no attitude. I just don't feel like being over there. I don't feel comfortable with the situation. I don't like that I'm out of my car right now. For what? Because you said I swerved? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, and then afterwards, same kind of bullshit lie. They both told me, well, no, there was a there was a guy that looked that fit your description. There's a, there, there's a guy. And I was like, bitch, how did you see that on the side of the road over there when I was driving by? You saw my whole face. You're like, oh, that looked like the guy. And then you just pulled me. That doesn't make any sense at all whatsoever. So, like, their bullshit excuse didn't make any sense. So, like, I've been, like, it's happened to me three times. Man. Thank God. I mean, that I mean that's not that bad, but it's like. I, nothing happened with that. They finally let me go. Whatever. Like Man, I, I, let, I even let them search my car just so I could get the fuck out of there. He's like, you sound like you got anything to, in the car. You sound like you're trying to defund, bro. I, well, <laughs> if you got some common sense police, sure. <laughs> so I mean, if you got some real police, like I don't mind the real ones. I mean, and again, that's that's three times. I'm sure that there's great police out there, like anything. But like, like I mean, it's there's always. I just keep getting those bad fucking assholes. Bad apples. Some dumbasses. Well, hey guys, uh, this cayenne and water running through me. <laughs> So I gotta let y'all go. <laughs> That's how we end the episode. Hey, I gotta go to the restroom. Thank I'll you. I'll see y'all later. Baby bladder. Peace out. <laughs>